Hello everyone, and welcome to a new episode of the Virtual Lab series of video blog presentations on various diverse scientific computing topics. As you can see here, the topic of today's presentation is on the importance of wideband gap semiconductor materials for the modern electronics industry, and how first principle simulations can expedite and accelerate their research and discovery aimed at improving their overall performance. So, let us begin our main scientific presentation of today. When we think about electric vehicles, EVs, lithium-ion batteries often come to mind first. Similarly, silicon, a material used in solar cells, is associated with photovoltaic, PV, systems. Both are critical in transforming energy from inefficient forms to useful ones. In the realm of eco-friendly energy, one often overlooked aspect is the efficient utilization of this energy which refers not only to the energy efficiency of home appliances but also to the conversion, transmission, and storage processes. Essentially, this consists in the entire journey from electricity generation to its delivery at home. Take, for example, powering a motor with electricity from a lithium-ion battery or supplying electricity from PV devices. This process requires the conversion of direct current, DC, into alternating current, AC or vice versa, through a power device like an inverter, which unfortunately results in energy loss. Moreover, with the growing demand for higher power density devices for electric vehicles, the size and weight of power devices are becoming increasingly significant issues. According to a recent report, 40% of the total energy produced in the United States is electrical, with about 30% of it passing through power devices. This figure is projected to rise to 80% over the next decade, due to the increasing demand for EVs and renewable energy sources. Thus, a mere 5% reduction in the energy loss of power electronics could result in energy savings equivalent to one-third of the total energy consumption in the United States. Hence, there's growing interest in power semiconductor devices that are not only smaller but also more efficient. Currently, silicon SI power devices are utilized in industrial applications. However, creating SI power devices that are both highly reliable and have a high power density to meet market demands is challenging. A semiconductor needs to have a high breakdown voltage, which is directly tied to its band gap size, to resist high voltage in the range of hundreds or thousands of volts without experiencing dielectric breakdown. When operating in high voltage environments of 1 kV or above, the temperature also significantly increases. Semiconductor materials, apt for high power density power devices operating at elevated temperatures of 200 degrees Celsius or more, are known as wide band gap, WBG, semiconductors. These include gallium nitride, GAN, silicon carbide, SIC, and gallium, 3, oxide, GA2O3. The band gaps of GAN and SIC are three times wider than that of SI, leading to a breakdown voltage of 2.5 to 3.3 MVCM, 10 times higher than SI's. Consequently, these two WBG semiconductors allow for the creation of power devices that are 10 times smaller than their SI counterparts at the same driving voltage. Given that their carrier mobility is akin to silicon's while their saturation velocity is higher, Wide band gap semiconductors are suitable for power devices operating at high voltages and frequencies. Thanks to these characteristics, significant strides have been made in GAN and SIC through research and development over the past two decades. Now, they are commercially available and used in various industrial contexts, such as 5G power amplifiers and inverters for electric vehicles. Gallium, 3, oxide, or GA203, has recently gained attention as a potential next-generation power semiconductor material. This inorganic compound can form various crystal structures, including the thermodynamically stable monoclinic beta phase, corundum-structured alpha phase, hexagonal epsilon phase, and orthorhombic kappa phase. Of these, beta-gallium oxide, GAR2O3, is especially promising due to its band gap of approximately 4.8 eV and breakdown voltage of 8 mvcm which are 1.5 times and 2 times higher than those of gallium nitride, GAN, respectively. As a result, GAR2O3 possesses ideal physical properties for high-powered density drives. This makes it a potential choice for applications like wind turbines, 
which require a voltage of at least 3 kV, marine and train power devices, and smart grids. Additionally, GAR203 can be grown into a substrate from its own melt, similar to how silicon bull are grown using the Chokralski method. This capability of producing high-quality, low-cost, and highly scalable native substrates makes GAR203 even more appealing for commercialization. Through homoepitaxial growth of GAR203, substrate-level dislocation density in the epitaxial layers can be minimized, addressing the issue of degraded device performance due to defects. Though still in the research and development stage, power devices with a breakdown voltage of 3 kV have been demonstrated using GA203 epitaxial layers grown on high-quality GAR203 substrates. However, some are skeptical about the potential of GAR203, pointing to intrinsic material properties that could hinder high-power device applications. For instance, like other oxide semiconductors, P-type doping is not feasible with GA203, meaning it can only produce unipolar, not bipolar, devices. This leads to limitations in device structure and challenges in maximizing the device's breakdown voltage to the material limit. Additionally, the thermal conductivity of GA203 is approximately 10 times lower than that of GAN and silicon carbide, SICK. In high-voltage applications where ambient temperatures can rise above 400 degrees Celsius, the reliability of GA203 devices could therefore be significantly compromised. Gallium, 3, oxide, or GA203, is somewhat new to the semiconductor application field compared to gallium nitride, GAN, and silicon carbide, SICK, necessitating further research. The key to success may not lie solely in the GAR203 substrate, and a heterogeneous substrate could be required to overcome the material's physical limitations. Therefore, foundational studies on the material, including examining the correlation between defects and devices, should be pursued more actively. Research should also be extended to include crystal phases other than the beta phase. Particularly, the epsilon and kappa phases, which exhibit spontaneous polarization, hold the potential for creating high electron mobility transistors based on two dimensional electron gas. While initial GA203 research was propelled by the commercially available GAR203 substrate, future success may hinge on studies of GA203 material growth and devices. These studies could combine high breakdown voltage with mobility while navigating the material's physical limitations. Ultimately, as depicted in the present slide, wide band gap, WBG, materials such as GAN, SICK, and GA203 each have their unique properties. By optimizing power devices for each material, these materials can help us tackle energy-related challenges. Let us now delve deeper into how AB Initio electronic structure computational techniques in material science, such as density functional theory, DFD, can help in the investigation of wide band gap semiconductors. Such AB Initio electronic structure methods play a critical role in probing the fundamental properties and behaviors of materials at the atomic and electronic levels, significantly impacting the field of wide band gap semiconductors like gallium oxide used in power electronics. These methods, grounded in quantum mechanics, offer valuable insights by simulating material properties using basic principles, without the reliance on empirical data. In the context of wide band gap semiconductors, one of the most pertinent applications of AB Initio calculations lies in the precise determination of electronic structure and band gaps. Understanding the band structure, especially in materials like GA203, is crucial because the wide band gap is what makes it suitable for high power, high temperature electronics. These calculations allow for the prediction of electronic properties, providing guidelines before synthesizing materials thus reducing experimental costs and guiding experimentalists on promising new materials. Another significant contribution of AB Initio techniques is the study of defects and impurities, which can dramatically influence the semiconductor's performance. These methods can predict formation energies of native defects, impurities, or dopants and their impact on the electronic structure, allowing for strategic manipulation of these features to achieve desired electronic properties. This is especially important for materials where doping strategies are needed to enhance conductivity or control compensation behavior. 
Thermal stability and resistance to high electric fields make wideband gap materials like GA203 promising for power electronics. AB Initio calculations assist in understanding the thermal properties by simulating phonon interactions and lattice dynamics, crucial for materials expected to perform in high temperature environments. Furthermore, these computational techniques help investigate surface and interface properties, which are critical in device applications for understanding phenomena like electron emission, surface conductivity, and interface stability. These properties are particularly important when considering oxide semiconductors in device environments, where surface and interface phenomena greatly affect the overall performance. In conclusion, AB Initio electronic structure computational techniques are instrumental in the investigation and development of wide band gap semiconductors for power electronics. They provide deep insights into the intrinsic properties of materials like GA203 guiding the efficient design of next-generation electronic devices, optimizing material synthesis, and fostering the development of innovative strategies to improve semiconductor performance. This synergy of computational prediction and experimental synthesis and characterization is paving the way for advanced electronic materials and devices. This brings us to the conclusion of our presentation. Many thanks for your attention. This presentation was provided in partnership with Virtual Lab, the company behind the development of the Materials Square online platform, for executing atomistic materials and chemical computations directly on the cloud. We therefore recommend to please give a try to the Materials Square simulation platform by visiting its corresponding website at www.materialsquare.com or more shortly matsku.com as noted in the present slide or alternatively also in the video description below. Furthermore, please do not hesitate to contact us by email, as also shown here on this slide, in case you would like to obtain further information on the various R&D services and solutions for materials and molecular modeling applications that we can provide at Virtual Lab. Many thanks again for your interest and your consideration.